so we do have a quorum. I think this is it for tonight. Okay, well, we should um, call the meeting to order at 7.03. Um, a new roll call. Commissioner Molly. Present. Commissioner Hickman. Present. Commissioner Jacobs is not present. Commissioner Miltenberger is not present. Commissioner Wan. Present. Great. I am also here. So we do have a quorum. We have four of us. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Mr. Hickman, do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? I think with four of us, we can do a simple vote. So, Commissioner Hickman, you're at the top of my screen. Let's go that way. Aye. Commissioner Lally? Aye. Commissioner Wan? Aye. Great. Okay, moving on. Public comment. At this time, any member of the public may address. Commission on matters which are not listed on the agenda or listed on the consent calendar. I do not believe we have any public commenters, but I will pause for a moment. Yeah, we don't have any public comment. Okay, no callers or anything like that. I don't see anyone, so I think yeah. we are set. Um, lucky us, this is going to be a speedy week, guys. Um, consent calendar. Got one item on the consent calendar. They're considered routine and non-controversial. It is the February 28th, 2022 meeting minutes approval. Does anyone have any comments or would anyone like to make a motion on the minutes from February? Seeking a motion. Do, do we need a motion for the consent calendar or do we just? Yes, we, we need have a motion. to do a motion for the consent calendar. I, I, I move that we accept the uh, consent calendar. Thank you, Commissioner Hickman. A second? I'll second that. Thank you. Um, raise your hand if you approve. Commissioner Wan, is that a yes? Perfect. Okay. Done. Report. I, did you say we had a museum report or not tonight? Yes. Um, we're supposed to, but I'm not seeing any of them. They told me they'll be here. I, oh, yeah, I did send them. I did send them an invite. Yes, okay. I did. Well, no, like but you. I'm not seeing anyone. Okay. Well, we'll move on then. Okay. Oh, we have a hand up. Who's, whose hand is up? Oh. My hand is up. There is some extreme background noise that makes it very difficult to hear. Is that better? That's much better. Okay, good. Good, because we're getting to your items, so I'm glad that you spoke up. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so we do not have a museum report tonight. So we'll move yes. on. So we had public meeting item A, 630 D Street, which is a planning application. And for a design review and a demolition to allow a 445 square foot addition to the existing 860 square foot home it is a contributor to the Old North Davis neighborhood. We're being asked to hold a public meeting and take the following three actions, which is to, I will list the actions and then we can go back and have a presentation and discussion. We are being asked to concur and recommend to the Planning Commission that the proposed project is categorically exempt from further environmental review pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15301A as an interior or exterior alteration of an existing facility. We're being asked to recommend that the Commission approve demolition number 1-2 subject to findings and conditions attached contained in attachment number one of this report including any modifications to the conditions that HRMC might make. And finally, we're being asked to provide advisory review and input on the proposed project relative to the demolition, the project's design compatibility with the designated historical resource within 300 feet, which are three resources, 602, 616, and 648 D Street. And 
uh, compliance with the downtown design guidelines, including the Secretary of Interior's SOI standards for rehabilitation. So this is a tier three design review. So the Planning Commission is the final decision body in the proposed project. We are being asked to look at it from a CEQA standpoint and the demolition standpoint. So um, Elma, did you want to tell us a little about your project? Yes, um, I would like to. Uh, this is an existing um, 860 square foot home of which there are, I think I haven't totally counted all of them, but I, I, I think there's five or six that are um, basically exactly the same. And I know of three that uh, have not had any extensive remodel and two that have had. Um, it's a single family home and it's going to remain a single family home. And as you might, might uh, realize, you know, 860 square feet for today's family living isn't going to um, be terribly workable. So the plan was to add square footage without it sort of overtaking the existing um, front elevation of the home. So I was able to rework the existing interior to enlarge both of the existing bedrooms and I removed the bathroom from that plan and basically the kitchen's being remodeled, the living space is being remodeled and then the addition will include um, a master suite with a bathroom and closet and a hall bath and a dedicated laundry room, making it a three bedroom, two bath home with a total square footage of 1300 square feet, which is still a very, very manageable size home for that size lot. And, you know, um, I don't think it's, I think it's in scale and in keeping with, um, with the neighborhood for sure. So um, one question that has come up is the demolition permit. Um, the existing walls, the exterior walls, are not going to be removed for this remodel and addition. There's only one section that will be removed, and that is where the addition will be attached, attached to the house. And it really only comprises about... Um, 23 and a half feet because there is, you know, uh, a, a pop out at the back and then, and it's also, um, a setback at the front. And so with the perimeter being 114 square feet existing because the non-compliant, um, uh, square footage at the back of the house that has to be removed due to the resale, um, inspection is actually not ex existing exterior walls it's been a, it was a, a porch that has just been um, enclosed so the existing back wall is um, is going to um, survive this remodel as well so of the 114 square feet only about 23 and a half to 24 square feet is actually going to be removed to do the addition and I'm not sure exactly how the calculations work to um, come up with that 25 percentage, but that is something that I would still like to, to look at. And then um, as far as the 445 square foot addition, I, I understand that it's, it's a large addition in, in relationship to the existing square footage, um, but I think it makes a, for a very livable small um, family home downtown. And uh, we certainly strived, or I did strive to, Keep it in character. I know that uh, the Historic Commission um, has, you know, has concerns about trying to make it look historically, like copying the existing historical look and trying to pretend that it was original. Um, but uh, in this case, I mean, I would like to cite um, two other properties that have been remodeled, um, the, same, the same properties. 645 C Street and 516 um, E Street, both of which um, have, well, one has a major uh, uh, addition to the side and set back from the front elevation, not unlike the one that I have designed. And then the E Street property has a pop out to the side. Both of them have um, definitely um, 
worked with the the very slim front post that was on the original structure and have added sort of a little bit more of an arts and crafts motif to the houses. Um, I do have pictures of them. I don't know how well they'll translate, but this one is grey, so it's hard to see. But um, they've had they've you know embellished the 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 front supports with the angled um, arts and crafts. Uh, posts and then um, added, you know, railing to give more of a porch-like appearance and a similar design with this one. And you can see the addition that mirrors the, the gable but set back, which is similar to what I'm proposing. Um, other than that, um, the client once, well, we have to replace all of the the windows in the house, and I know there is um, uh, you know, you're always asking to keep them within the existing size and and um, configuration, and that is workable except for where egress windows are required in bedrooms. Um, so, um, at present, you know, they don't meet egress, so there will be slight enlargement to make sure that we can meet that code. Um, so if you have any other questions. I, I, on the windows, it, it looks like on that, that front bedroom that you have currently one window there, you're going to two windows. Is that to meet the egress requirement or is that a aesthetic choice? Do you have that was an windows? aesthetic choice of the clients. Okay. It, would, would one window meet the egress requirement? Do you um, know? Well, the, one went with, with, yeah, if it was big enough, yes, it, but it would be a little enough, larger. But then it would have to have a, a the asymmetrical look. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so we're going from one window to two, and they're also they're also going to be a little bit larger. Is that correct? No, no. I've enlarged the one on the side of the house okay. to meet egress. Okay. In fact, they're they're a little smaller. Is okay. currently a fireplace and chimney, or is that an, a new addition on the renderings? That is an addition. Okay. That'll be a, like a work, real working wood fireplace? No. Okay. No. It's no. just the chimney? Well, <laughs> the gas fireplace? It'll be a gas insert, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and that one of the elevations, the north elevation on, on page 21, it looked a little bit to me like the like the chimney is – it looks like there's a, an extension to the house on the south side with the chimney on that, but it looks like the, the drawing suggests the chimney is, is just being added to the existing house. So there's no addition on that south side. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. I think the, I think the north elevation on that page – just the way that the porch roof is drawn suggests that the house is being extended to the south to the um, to the side there of the chimney. But I, 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 my understanding is that's that's not correct. That is no, correct. I'm looking for my drawing, but no, just excuse okay. me for a minute. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know where it is right now in the in the packet. There is no extension to the south side. I, I think it's just the way that the drawing yeah. is done. Yeah, I think it's the rendering okay. as well. It, it threw me off, so I yeah. just wanted to. Yeah, so like an the, the, on the, side. the extension is purely a rectangle mm -hmm. that is attached to the north side, sitting back 16, inch, uh, 16 feet, right. and then it extends two feet beyond the back and that is purely so that we can get the roof lines to connect nicely. Mm -hmm. And the roof line is not being um, extended upward. You're there is nothing shaped exactly the same pitch okay. as it is currently. The porch is exactly the same pitch. The porch is in the same place. There's been no, you know, because there's little setbacks for the porch. None of that's been changed. Um, all we're doing is beefing up the members a little bit so it doesn't look quite so um, underbuilt. Okay. I think I brought up the, the odd rendering of the north. Oh, side. I get it. Yes. What you're seeing there 
actually, it's correct, but it's not the house. What you are seeing there, if you look at the floor plan, at the site plan, there is a storage unit with a trellis attached. And it's what's being shown as it looks like part of the house, but it's really in the back. Right. Yard. And, yeah, and that's because it's this is done with a 3D model, so it pulls those up. It looks flat and it's not. No, and you won't see that in that um in with the house because the fence will be in, in front of it and plantings. It's set way back. Okay. Um, so we are asked to do a few things here. Um, does anyone have any other questions for the project sponsor? I can ask about the plantings. It, is, right now, you don't really see where the uh, where the where the addition is going to be. There's 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 shrubs on that side of the oh, house. Oh no, is, there is more than shrubs. There's a huge, <laughs> beautiful old sycamore tree, uh -huh. which, which will now, if you look at the pictures, you can't see it. The trunk because it's behind the fence okay so now you will see the tree in its entirety because the fence will be behind the tree and where is the uh where is the addition going to be in reference to the tree behind the tree oh behind the tree okay so yeah. you're gonna have the, the tree is going to be in front of the addition so that you're going to have you're going to have the tree in some ways sort of shielding the addition at least partially from from view is that yeah. is that correct yeah, okay. if you look at the site plan, I, mm -hmm. um, I think the tree is drawn on that. Can you find the site plan? Yeah. Okay, I see it. It's, it's not real prominent. I see it. I see it there. Oh, hang on a second. I can't get all your member stuff there. Yeah, it's on the site plan, and it's a very, very large tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not great. It's right. Well, you can't see my arrow, but yes, it's it's right in front of it. That's, okay. That's that distance that setback is actually predetermined by that tree. Make sure we have enough clearance mm -hmm. behind that tree, because um, right now it's it's sort of hidden. And the fence though is going to come down. Is the fence going to come down? Well, the fence is going to be repaired and taken care of. The fence is, there's going to be a fence, but the fence will be from the side of the house to the, um, to the north fence. So there will right. not be a big, long fence in the front there like there is now. What okay. you will see is the tree will be in the front garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. So, yes, I mean, the, the addition is going to be not particularly prominent at all. Right, right. Emma, how, how far is the uh, wall, this wall from the tree trunk here? I don't have that dimension with me right now, Ike. I, ch I checked with Don Shaw. I can get that for you if it's um, necessary. If we end up going to the planning commission, that question is going to come up, you know, based on typical concerns for tree health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I asked Don. I just don't remember what he said. It's in my notes somewhere. I mean, I did this months Luckily, ago. We're not the tree commission, so tonight it's not necessary. <laughs> I will, uh, I will make sure I have that. Okay. Other questions for Elma? Okay, thank you. So let's chat. Um, looks like we're being asked to determine CEQA status, demolition permit, and some advisory review and input on the design relative to the demolition and design compatibility. So let's take this one at a time in terms of discussion. The commissioners have thoughts on the projects being categorically exempt from CEQA. But that's something we concur with. Commissioner Hickman, you have 
thought. No, 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 I don't think I have any thoughts on that. I mean, I, I noted that the Yellow North neighborhood gave uh, considerable support to this, and I think that, that means a lot to me. Um, but I, I, I think I, I think the the changes that are being made to the porch are aesthetically beneficial. I think replacing those little skinny columns. I mean, we're changing it from sort of being a little bit of a minimal traditional house to being more of a craftsman appearance house. And then I think if this were a merit resource or if it was a higher category of historic resource, that would be a concern. But as a contributor to the Old North neighborhood where, you know, where the real concern is, I think, for the mass and the scale of the house and for having more of a craftsman type's appearance, I think the, the changes that are being made are really sort of improvements. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I would say I'm in support of the project and I would favor saying that it should be categorically exempt from further environmental review. Commissioner Bale or Juan, any other comments on the CEQA status? No? Okay. I'm thinking the same thing just because it's not taking away from anything and it seems like a big increase on the functionality as well. Um, and it does look like it would still kind of fit into that neighborhood just based off of what I know of the area. Okay, thank you. Um, demolition permits. Any modifications? Do we, do we agree in the findings and conditions of contained in attachment number one? And would you include any additional modifications or conditions? Can I make a couple of statements about that before yeah. you take any formal action? Um, before I go, let's see who is on the participation side. If it's anyone from the museum, can we ask uh, the person on the uh, attendee side to yeah. identify whether they are here um, from the museum. Hello? I think that person is muted still. JT. Oh, J JT. Uh, I thought asked to unmute. Okay. <laughs> maybe they're just participating and not. Okay. Um, or maybe they're trying to unmute and I'm clicking to unmute them at the same time. Uh, JT, can you hear us? Okay, if you can, and if you are from the museum and you want wish to speak, let us know as we go along. Let me make a couple of observations about the demolition. Um, the applicant has consistently questioned the demolition. Um, I haven't seen any exhibit. Typically, the applicant would provide an exhibit to show that uh, less than 25% of the exterior wall is being removed. Uh, my understanding from my uh, co-workers, colleagues who have reviewed this, uh, Eric Lee and Tom, is that it uh, involves more than 25% and therefore requires a demolition. And he's, she's also saying that tonight. Um, yeah, in, the event, in the event, she provides um, exhibit that proves that the walls, the exterior walls being removed is less than 25%. Um, do the commission, as part of your consideration, do you wish to have that being factored in whereby we didn't have to, because the only reason this is escalated to the planning commission, actually the two, there are two reasons. Uh, one is the demolition and one is when you add more than 25%, I mean more than 40% of the existing floor area ratio, then the code requires us to go to planning commission. But from the standpoint of the demolition, if that isn't a consideration, then we can be looking at one factor why it should or go to the planning commission. But maybe factor that in when you make your recommendation uh, in the event that she provides evidence that less than 25% of the wall is being removed, that, that, that the decision of the commission on the demolition is final on that aspect, because that's within your charge to say, yes, this do not rise to the occasion of a demolition certificate that the commission is supposedly issuing when you act on demolition applications. So I don't know if I'm making any sense. Emma, am I making any sense in terms of what you want? Um, well, no, because I don't really understand it myself and I still haven't been able, well, one, I haven't <laughs> um, been able to capture what sort of evidence one requires 
and how the calculation is actually made. So I'm, I was just posing the question because it all came up. I, I assumed, you know, that it needed a demolition permit, but it came up when I read your report and it stated that all the walls were going, the exterior walls were going to come down. And I corrected that because that's definitely not the case. And I've spoken to the contractor who's going to be doing the job and verified again with him whether that's going, going to be an issue, not where the dry rot is. The dry rot's on the exposed fascias and rafter tails and things that it's not, we haven't discovered any in the, the walls as much as you can discover. Um, and what needs to if there is any we can do it from the inside which obviously the interior walls have to come down or the interior cladding of the walls have to has to come down anyway for electrical etc so it just uh, it just raised the question um ike when when um we had that discussion whether or not it it really is 25% when it's just that wall where the addition's being attached. And I don't know how the calculation's truly made. So um, Yeah, how the calculation is made is if you were to take a linear measurement of the exterior walls, if you were mm -hmm. to put a tape measure from one end mm -hmm. of the building and then you go around and meet where you started it and take a linear measurement, let's assume that it's... Uh, uh, all around uh, 114 feet. Okay, 114 feet. Then mm -hmm. you divide that by the total number of li linear feet that would be removed. And, and that's how you get your percentage. So if you say, for instance, before you said it was 27, so if it's uh, 114 feet and you divide it by, uh, if it's 27 feet divided by 114, then that gives you your percentage. Then you today mentioned that it's no longer 27 feet that is going to be. Um, now, 27 um, feet is the actual size of the addition. So when you look at how it attaches to the existing structure, mm -hmm. two feet out the back, you subtract that, and then you can see where it's the part that's attached to the house is less than the overall of the front yeah, so yeah I, and that's, it's about 23 and a half feet <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying you know it looks to me like it, it's approximately 24 feet which is less than 25 feet if that happens to be the case then the 25 percent invocation of demolition is no longer feasible uh, and it's not applicable then the only thing that becomes the question is is the total addition of uh, uh, 518 square foot uh, compared to 860, more than 40 percent of the uh, of the uh, gross floor area, and the answer is yes, based yes. on the mm -hmm. based on the city code. Then that design review um, is a separate action that is required, and I'm just trying to see if I included the code section, but I don't think I included it in the planning in this uh, process. So that requirement requires a separate design review. And what I'm not quite sure is if that planning, if the planning commission is to act on that design review or whether it is simply a matter of um, uh, staff action. And right. in, that, in that regard, then we still have an issue because we presume that this meeting is going to be a just a meeting and then we go through the planning commission and then do the actual notification. But we didn't do any notification for this process because we were assuming we are going to plan a commission. The HRMC can take action tonight, recognizing that there might be the potential for not going to plan a commission. That's all I was trying to allude to. Right. And, and I appreciate and that's the case. I appreciate that. I and thank you for explaining that because that's what I was trying to bring up. And, and, you know, part of it was because there wasn't clarity for me um, on on how you actually um, come with uh, come up with that calculation. So I apologize for that. It's thoroughly confusing, commissioners, because this is typically not what's before you. And um, when I realized we wanted to meet this month and this project was uh, in the offering, 
I thought maybe I bring some item before the commission. So I actually had to do this in a day and a half to get this to the commission. And I had to work today. I had to explain why I worked on my own time and then didn't charge the project as much the time I spent on it. But that's a separate issue. So it's just to make sure that we have an item for tonight is why this is before us tonight. Not because I have the time for it. I had to make time on well, my I, personal time. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I don't know all the details. I know that Elmer worked with Eric Lee and uh, Tom uh, Kanahan in, the, in our office. And I was going off of what I'm told and the email correspondences they had with Emma in terms of what I did and well, basically quickly reviewing what I can review to get it together. And I also wanted, similar to Erin, I thought the new commissioners were going to start tonight. So I wanted to use this opportunity to educate on the Secretary of Interiors, uh, what is a rehabilitation and what is a reconstruction, because it's a conversation we really never had. Uh, for new commissioners to understand what those are. That was why a little more detail of that was in the staff report uh, as a way of education. We typically do all these things. We look at, um, look, look for instance, on uh, 47 College Park or Emma's F Street project uh, or, or the D Street project by uh, the Fox. One of the things that occurred was we worked on them as a, a rehab, but eventually the walls came down because of dry rot issues, which isn't necessarily what the commission saw. Uh, both neighborhood folks were complaining, as well as some commissioners were asking, hey, when this came before us, there was never mentioning that this is gonna be a strip down. We were told that the wall's gonna be intact. And that was a conversation Emma and I was having privately uh, on Thursday night, way past, I think all the way to 9 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, so way past my <laughs> my time for, to work, but that you know is something that I didn't have time to vet with her as well as get enough information to assist you. Um, so my response is in consideration of the demo aspect of it. We are presuming that is 25 percent or more, and if what Emma tells us happens to be the case, that eventually there isn't going to be any demo of the rest of the walls except for where the additional cost and then that any exterior change that is happening is on the porch uh, materials which are not part of the walls then it's going to be less than 25 percent and then we would presume that demo demolition permit is not needed from the commission and therefore it's not part of the discussion so i just wanted to say any action you make let's sort of give a couch that if it's found that this isn't necessary then it's not necessary that's all i'm trying to say sure I would prefer not to approve a demolition certificate if it's not necessary. So I would say I would not want to vote on that tonight, given our conversation right here. You know, that wouldn't be in that. But if, yeah. if, it comes to, if it's 26%, do we need the demolition permit? Can't we just yes. act on that if, tonight and say vote on in favor if of If it's 25% or more, then yeah, demolition is. is so you're saying, option. Commissioner Hickman, that you would like to not have to have them come back, that, you know, what we're saying is, it, it, I mean, if it were yeah. 20, it, if the project as it is right now were 26 percent, I would vote to accept a demolition permit so this project could go forward. So I, is there is there any reason for us not to just go ahead and do that? To just we, we, we say we're fine with demolition permit. And if we don't need one, then fine. We don't need exactly. One. That's what I'm suggesting that you factor well, in. I, I'm suggesting let's move forward as if there is a 25 percent or more demolition. And then if we eventually find that it's not necessary, then it doesn't matter, your action is mute, but then she still has to deal with the review of all additions to single family dwellings um, that increase the gross uh, square footage of the dwelling by more than 40%. Sure, sure, that's and, a planning commission issue. Yeah, and that, so, and, and that is a different issue, yeah. yeah that is beyond the commission. with issuing a demolition permit, if it is 25% or more contingent on, on what happens is that what happens if you get in there and you decide you want to take down all the walls and all of a sudden it, it's a, it is a demolition and, and we didn't intend to improve that, right? That That's my, not that I think you're a bad actor, but you know, things happen. Contractors get minds of their own and decide that this is no good. Let's just take it down. And, and really we would have liked to have saved that siding as, as part of the historic character of that, of that neighborhood. So I guess that's my only concern with approving a contingent demolition certificate. Uh, um... 
Well, the first of all, the, the property is is stucco, so it's quite a bit different from um, you know siding in the sense that. Right now, there aren't any real obvious signs of bad cracks or anything. Now, in in repairing the foundation, some might appear, but stucco is repairable. Dry rot in in siding is only repairable to a point. You end up, you know, plugging it with compounds and and painting over the top of it and after a while there's not enough good wood to attach to that's not the case with stucco so um just bear that in mind that um it's it's a completely different building material that we're dealing with and um my contract to john hill um i've been working with for nearly well it's 28 years and um, he, I keep him busy full time. So we are like, you know, um, and I, we've had extensive discussions about this. Um, and uh, he does not want to strip and restucco the house. Other commissioners, would you like to comment on the demolition certificate? Okay. Um, let's move on down. Well, let's, so, so the, we approve demolition or the planning commission approves it. What, what is the order of operations here? Right, so it says the commission approve, and does that mean we are approving it or we're recommending to the planning commission they approve it? I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, um, Sorry about that. I was reviewing the authorities uh, in terms of when it exceeds 40% of uh, the gross square footage of the floor area ratio of a single family home and a new addition exceeds 40%. That is a staff function. So if there is no demolition beyond 25%, it does not go to planning commission. Then it will be a letter of action and tend to approve by staff to uh, people within 500 foot of that uh, uh, property. So you will not go to planning commission. That's what I was just reviewing on the code section. Okay, but so, in terms of the demolition if, certificate, who issues that? The Historic Resources Commission or the Planning Commission? The Historical Resources Commission. Okay. But, so. but if, if we had made a determination that this is a tear down, tier three, if you look on that staff report, let me see, do I have it open up, up still? Let me see. Um, you have some, some okay, yeah. stuff, yes. Yes, yes. So let me go to that section on tier three. Give me one second. Let me oops, call it up. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it. I can expand it some more, see if it helps. So tier three says uh, new structures or additions greater than two stories or 32 feet in, in the mixed use areas and greater than three stories in the core area. So to us is new structures, and you, how do we define new structures? The presumption is the entire building will be torn down and then replaced with another structure. So that's why we called it a tier three. And if what Elma is telling us is, at the end of the day, it's not going to be similar to what we've experienced with the other projects where it's stripped down to uh, some posts, <laughs> I don't want to even call them framing uh, some posts. If we are not going to have that type of situation, for instance, you know, Commissioner Montgomery, you or Chair President Montgomery, you remember about 47 College Park, your concern was about that building eventually being stripped down to the ground. And that's what eventually happened. They actually stripped it down to the ground and the neighborhood is upset about it. And everybody, that's what happened with Mr. Fox's project. It was stripped down to the ground and everybody's concerned about it and complain. The old North folks keep calling staff about it. So if she believes that that isn't going to happen, one of the things I was saying to her on Thursday night was if there is the possibility that it could be stripped down to just be a few posts left and slab, it might be in her her best interest and clients to just go through the you know tier three design review process and go to planning commission and get it approved anyway then it saves our time and process 
But if she is 100% sure that that isn't going to happen, then the next steps here will be just a simple staff design review process. And this will not go to the planning commission based on what I looked up on the, on the code. Because no, then but, it, would not be a, it would not be a new project, a new, I mean, a new structure. Yeah, but I, I'm, so this, but if, if it does require a demolition certificate, it would go to the planning commission under this, under the project submitted to the proposed demolition. I'm just saying. Yeah, let me, I, I'm sorry, maybe I wasn't quite clear. If, if it's not a total new construction, no, the HRMC is the final decision maker. The only reason it will ever go to planning commission is if there is the presumption, which is what we had, that this thing is going to be at, at the end of the day a tear down and a new structure. That's the reason it's a tier three, and that's why I was uh, I think it's the uh, one, two, three, yeah, the third bullet point, you know, new structures. That's the only the reason. Is that fourth bullet point about the demolition? I'm, I'm just I don't understand where. <laughs> That's not applicable to this? Yeah, it it's like a project that include. Yeah, the, it's a project that include uh, proposed demolition of primary buildings, forty-five years of old age and older. That's another reason. Yes, you're right. That yeah, like, you know, maybe yeah, the forty percent is a staff decision. But I'm just saying, if we approve a demolition certificate, which gives her the ability to demolish the building. Yes, then yeah, we would have to go to planning commission. But it will go to planning commission. And so, uh, yes. uh, Emma, do you understand what she's saying? If you look on the fourth bullet point, yes. projects that include proposed demolition of primary buildings 45 years of age or older is a tier three. And I believe that's what Eric and Tom was actually saying. And I didn't even think of that. That's what they were saying, that that's, that was the basis for their decision. I thought the basis for their decision was it's going to be stripped down and then a new structure goes up. But that and the fact that bullet point number four uh, calls for planning commission action are the two reasons they determined that it's going to go to the planning commission. I don't uh, even I don't even understand what projects that include the pro proposed demolition of primary buildings, 45 years of age and older. So I'm your not, building is that age and correct more than 25 percent of the walls is the demolition. So if you don't if you say I'm not going to remove more than 25%, I don't need a demolition certificate. Right. Would be not part of that process is what I am reading from this. I, am I wrong? No, you are, you you are absolutely right. If Emma, what what the chairperson is saying is the commission has no role if you are 100% certain that it's going to be less than 25%. Then there is no demolition. Therefore, the commission should not be acting in any form on the demolition. They could only be providing advisory input on the remodeling that is going to occur, the addition side of it, to say that it's appropriate remodeling or it's not appropriate remodeling. But then they would not be acting, period, on the demolition. And that's an appropriate call. If you okay. really believe that your project doesn't involve any form of demolition, that less than 25% is what's going to be removed of the exterior wall, then she is accurate. This commission, based on the code section we just read, has no reason to act on the demolition because there is no demolition period. Okay. Um, you always come back to us if, if your plan changes, I suppose, and, and say, actually, I'm going to remove 29% and so I need demolitions to get and then we will discuss it briefly and move on. Okay, well, I, I guess the only thing is that I need, you know, obviously to clarify this, that it's all been calculated correctly. That's all, because, you know, we're doing math off a, 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 you know, off, off a little small set of plans. I'm, yeah. you know, punching it into my phone. So yeah. Yeah. I, I you want to clarify that before, um, obviously. Um, uh, I guess all it would mean is that would this um, have to come back before a meeting or could it be? Um, well, Emma, what I would recommend is given that the next step, let's assume you find out that a demolition certificate isn't needed the next step would have been staff action instead of planning commission action. So right. it, it probably would behove you, uh, this is just my off the cuff thinking here, mm -hmm. behove you to postpone to nice action. And then if you find out that indeed it's less than uh, 25%, then we come to the uh, HRMC 
with a final decision. That means both uh, staff action and HRMC will cumulate. If we send a letter of intent to approve, inviting people to show up at HRMC at the next HRMC meeting. At the, at the end of that meeting, that will be end of comment period. Anyone who wishes to appeal the decision of the department to approve your addition then can do so. Um, you just have it concluded at that night, you know, so we will write a letter inviting folks saying, hey, provide us your comments, but your last day to provide your comment is on the 18th of April when the commission meets. And on that date, if you didn't provide it come it, uh, April 19th, you would have to appeal the decision to approve it. So we send that a letter of intent to approve and the commission would then deliberate again on your proposal in terms of whether the uh, the uh, addition as proposed is an appropriate addition to the neighborhood. It seems there is an inclination, at least by the current commissioners here tonight, that what, what is being proposed um, is, is uh, a reasonable one and, and is supportable. But the thing is, uh, we have this cloud over our head, you know, is there a demo, is there no demo? And you've raised a good point that you don't know, and I don't know. If you don't know, you are the applicant, I don't know, the commission don't know, then they can act on it. Well, it's a, it's a very fine line because it's right, you know, it's right in there. Those percentages are so critical. And, um, but, you know, doing it this way will delay things again because I have to go before the historic commission again and, you know, either way. And then, um, depending on which which way it ends up going, then planning commission. So it's pushing things out yet again. Well, that's your call. I mean, I don't know what I can do. I don't know what the chairperson or the rest of the commission can do. They need to act based on verifiable information, and it doesn't seem like there is a verifiable information that you or, or I can provide them at this moment to make a decision, Right. And they can't they can't um, make a recommendation on the other portion of it. I certainly think we can provide advisory input based on the plans that we have here. Um, I assume we could take action on the CEQA status. I personally, I'm not a huge, I, I am hesitant to do demolition certificate at this very moment. Commissioner Hickman, go ahead. I mean, the only thing that's going to change here is whether it comes back at, at, at 28% or 24%. I mean, the, the plan's not going to change. Right. It, and so I'm looking at the plan and I think this, this plan looks good to me. It, this is a matter of whether whether the number calculates out above or below a certain percentage. Sure, but and, if we issue the demolition certificate, they will, she will have to go to planning commission. But we, I mean, it, it comes with the conditions, and I think one of the conditions can be that if if there's a change to the percentage of the of the house that's being demolished, then that needs to come back before the the commission. Ra- than- rather than rather than requiring a separate meeting to look at the same plan again with a slightly different tweak on that. What should have happened here is this number should have been determined prior to coming to this commission. I, I mean, we shouldn't be having to do this in the you're meeting. Ab- you're absolutely correct. And um, I apologize for that. But, um, but I, 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 it also got pushed to this meeting for other reasons. I haven't even had a chance to have a discussion with Ike. It was done by a text while we were at another meeting. So... <laughs> You know, um, I mean, it's, 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 yes, I have some responsibility in it, but also, as Ike mentioned, you know, um, there's been very few days between when he first circulated the report and I noticed this Mm -hmm. situation and brought it to his attention. I I, I mean, I, I also think that if we've seen the plan, we could, we could vote on the plan and, and we do have we do have the ability to put those conditions in there. And I think we make one of the conditions that if there is a change in, in the plan for the amount of demolition from what we are seeing, then it comes back before the commission. And it, if it calculates out it's slightly above 25 or slightly below, I, that, that's not a big concern for me. I would be supportive of, of adding that as a condition that if it's greater than 23 and a half feet, let's just round up and call it 24, 24 
Mm. Well, what, um, I, what I would suggest in terms, if you want to add a condition, we go with the code. The code says uh, a demolition is when it's 25% or more. So if there is a exterior wall removal of 25% um, or more, well, then- Well, that just gives them the demolition permit. They do whatever they want, though. So Commissioner Hickman is saying- I don't like understand what it does. Yeah. I don't, it's a percentage regardless. I, I don't understand that. And I mean, the 25% is 25% anywhere in the house. In this case, it's it's not on the front facade. I mean, it's it's on the side of the house that's behind a tree. So I, I, I'm not particularly concerned about the demolition that's occurring there. I, I, I hear your concern. We've seen this with other properties where we give a demolition permit because we think it's going to be a very small project, then it turns into a great bigger project. I think I there's a way that- The contractor takes it and, and they have a permit and they do what it. I get that's their job. Like I'm not faulting them. That's their job. Sometimes it's they open up the walls and they find dry rot and like the, their, their understanding of the condition changes and then they have right. to do more. And, and what we're hearing here is this is a different type of building with stucco and it doesn't require that same same level of, of removal if there is dry rot or you, you don't change the outside of the building the same way. I, I, I would favor issuing a demolition permit here and, and moving this project forward rather than requiring it to come back, but I'm not, I'm not the only vote on this. So if we issue the demolition permit, then it does still have to go to the planning commission unless somehow you decide you're, you're not removing 25 percent you don't want a demolition permit i just was i just want to be clear that, that is the next step is that we don't issue it it still has to go on because then it's a tier three project if we issue demolition permit so if you're trying to expedite the process project i don't this this may work i may keep it moving forward and that's great I just want to be clear that we're not the last people to look at this if we issue demolition permit, according to what I just saw on the screen. Well, doesn't it mean that either it's reviewed by staff or if it's over the 25%, it goes to the planning commission? Isn't it choice A or choice B? Yes, yeah, so we've given you a demolition permit. So we're saying it's 25% or more. There's no. Well, I don't think that's what commission. There's no contingent demolition certificate we issue. It's a yes or a no. Yes, you get a demolition permit, or no, you don't. It's not like a gray one. We're not. We're not ruling that's over 25. We're just saying that 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 based on the plan that we're seeing, we would authorize a demolition permit. And if it comes in at lower than 25. We're, we're not saying it's above 25. We're just saying, based on what we're seeing, we, we approve this plan and we, we would approve a demolition certificate here. And if, if it comes out that it's less than that, then she can get the staff review and doesn't require going before the right. plan, despite having gotten the demolition permit from us. I'm just saying the tier three is a proposed demolition. And we have a demolition permit, you have a proposed demolition. That's the way I read that code. But if that's that's fine, I just there are lots of instances that have happened. I think in the last like ten years, or this is not being followed the right way. So and that bothers me because I don't like to drive by those things and see things demolished and have I know it's fifty years old and older. So, but I, I would suggest then that, that I, I'll make a motion that we approve the demolition permit and we vote on it. And if it gets majority, then she gets it. And if, she, if it doesn't, then she doesn't. Sure. And then, we, then then we come back next month. And, and look at it again. Okay, do we wanna take the first two? Uh, you wanna take number one and number two in your motion? So the CEQA and the demo permit together? Sure. Or separately? So, so it, I'll make a motion that this project is categorically exempt from further environmental review and to approve it. Now, I think we need to, we probably need to separate those so we can vote separately okay. on those well, issues. Do the so one, so one I'm saying this is categorically exempt from further environmental review. I have a second. I would say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, and uh, how about votes? Aye. Commissioner Lally? Yes, aye. Commissioner Wan? Aye. Okay. Um, I had a quick question before we move on to the one about the demolition permit. Um, the conversation that we were having about it kind of being contingent on the 25%, if we were to vote yes on that, that's only if it's below 25%, correct? Or is this just the whole thing? 
No, I, I would be moving. The, I would be moving based upon the plan that we are seeing, regardless of whether that's 25 or slightly gotcha. higher, that that we we gotcha. issue a permit. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Okay, you want to repeat yourself for your motion? Okay, I would. I I I, I move that we approve a demolition permit for this project based upon what we've seen with the conditions that are um, stated in in, in our in the, in the attached document. Okay, I'm sorry, did, did, did the chair vote on the categorical exemption? Yes, I voted yes in my head, but not out loud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't communicate telepathic to you, sorry. It's all right, thank you. Okay, uh, I have a motion, do I have a second? I will second. Well, question question okay. for the motion, uh, is that contingent on addition of a, you know, because you discuss of a condition or there is no condition placed it's on it? It's a contingent on attach, it is just conditions that contain an attachment number one, it is not contingent, it is a demolition permit. So just as staff recommended? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Commissioner Hickman yes. Commissioner Lawley? Yes. Um, yes. Mr. Wong? Yes. Okay, I will also vote yes. I do I do like this project despite my grumpiness about the demolition permit. I just I I still feel that you might have to look at a commission, but I will vote yes. I think that I'll have a great project in the demolition will be minor and in nature. So when it comes down to it. So all yes, I Okay. Now to the fun part, the advisory review and input on the project relative to design compatibility. But we don't need any motions on this. If anyone would like to provide some input on well, I, actually, you don't actually here there is no motion needed as much no, as there's no says. motion. Yes, I said that there's no motion. We're just yeah, so it's, it's essentially you know each commissioner providing some guidance as to what they think. Could be done better, or what is they think is done right, or whether they think is okay as, as proposed, you know. So here we're looking for any. Is there any design changes that you see necessary? Is there anything that is done right that you want to acknowledge? Uh, but predominantly, if there is any areas of improvement, you know, just let us know so that we can take that under advisement as we move forward with the project, whether administratively or whether at the planning commission. Um, Mr. Wan, do you have any input on the project design? No. Mr. Lale? Yeah, I think just everything that's already been discussed. Mr. Hickman? When I look at the, uh, the, the 646C building guy brought up as an example, it, when you look at that one, there's completely different siding on the addition as opposed to the, the original building. I mean, that is something that we often recommend as sort of a Secretary of the Interior standard to differentiate the new construction from the old construction. I, I don't know if that's being considered here. I mean, we're, the, the elevations that we got don't really show siding materials. Yeah. That tree is going to make a big difference, I think, for shielding it, but I, I wonder if that's something that is being considered here, is, is using a different siding material. Um, we decided not to because it's going to be so broken up with the tree mm -hmm. that it might look like a little shed path there if it's in a different material. We really wanted it to look like a house. And um, if any of you have time to drive by, um, you'll, the, the tree is, is massive. The trunk is, I don't know, six, seven feet. Um, so um, I... I deliberately kept it all stuck over for that reason. Um, okay. Is this the house that currently has plywood on it? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. I've walked by several times. Um, and it has plywood on it because of the um, horrible security situation that arose on the property. Um, so as soon as we can get through all of this, um, we are looking forward to removing the, the plywood, but the client has, um, I mean, most the, the, if the plywood's off the front facade now, um, and there's a security system that's been installed. Um, you know, my comments are in the same vein as that, you know, we, we 
try to keep them um, in, that when someone someone can tell with some careful consideration that this is an addition and not part of the original structure. Um, I do feel we do have DPR form for this. It's be documented that this was an addition. You know, in, in the future, hopefully, not all records are lost. And, you know, this will be have documented. Um, uh, and, and no one will walk by and be confused by future historic resources commission meeting. Uh, it is a little bit arts and craftsy, and, and it is a significant change from its current, from, uh, from its historical nature, which, which was fairly minimalist. Um, I, I get that with the addition and, and the add addition of the arts and crafts to the, of the of the porch becomes more like a house instead of a, a small tiny bed. Um, but I, I you know the neighborhood is supportive and I don't I don't have any recommendation. So noting my always trying to keep them distinct from each other. I know you know that, so we don't talk about it anymore. Anyone else has any comments? Otherwise, we can close this and let Ella go on her way. Okay. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. And um, it was a rousing discussion about demolition permits. And I think we all learned something. So thanks. Well, thank you, commissioners, for um, bearing with me. Thank you, Ike, for working through um, those that situation and um, we'll be talking soon to see what, where to take this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Hang on. I who's next? Uh, give me one second. What are we? Oops, we didn't do public comment. <laughs> oh, comment. There was public comment. There was no public comment at the time. Oh, yes. There are public comment. Oh, well. JT, attendee, public comment. Okay, number seven. Um, the historic district management plan for College Park. I do have an update. Yeah, I, I have nothing new to add to what we uh, discussed last meeting, except that staff planning staff has uh, started work on providing comments. At least half of the staff has provided comment. <laughs> That's <laughs> half of two. <laughs> so uh, we probably by middle of next month or maybe towards the beginning of um, April, we'll be able to get some planning staff uh, comments down to Mike Gravigilia, uh, but otherwise everything is still, we are heavily impacted with uh, lack of staff you know, in terms of what we can get done. We still have a lot of stuff. For instance, I have another meeting tomorrow, I mean on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday night, uh, planning commission on, on a major project. So that is what's taking my attention away from this. Um, uh, could you forward the comments you received from staff on the plan to the, his, to the commission so that we can take a look at what the original document was and what, their, what the staff comments were and just that before Mike incorporates everything? You know, the subcommittee on HR, I mean, on the College Park and Mike Gravigilia, they think it's best that staff vets everything internally because of the conflicts and those are the legal issues that are no, that's involved. Not, I just, I'm just curious what their comments are, just as a point of information for us. I, I won't make any comments. I'm just, I, I would like to see a little bit of the process. Okay, I'll check with Sherry Mesker, who is the interim planning director, to see if that position is changed. The, let me give you the reason why staff and also even the consultant and the subcommittee is hesitant wanting to review this. Um, they don't well, want... I've never seen it, so maybe I can oh. get it. So yeah. that would be yeah. great. Yeah, neither has Scott either. So they didn't want to see it. I mean, he didn't want to see it. Alan and Laura didn't want to see it. They wanted us to finish our internal process, whereby you as a subcommittee would be able to just provide a useful guide based on the final product, and then the next step will be bringing it to the full commission. Yeah, I'd um, like to see the points what, that Mike 
had uh, that the staff disagrees with, and I'm, I'm not going to take a side. I, I assume he'll incorporate what staff wants. I just okay. am curious what that process is to help us. Move. Okay, I will check in with Sherry again, you know, okay. because there is some reasons they have. I don't know the legal ramifications, you know, but they wanted to make sure that it's done right. But I will get that. But the only thing you need to know is if I send it to you, I think that's the answer. If I send it to you or to Scott, then it's okay. a public document. So anyone else that requests it would have access to it when it's a draft, a working draft between the, consul uh, the consultant and staff that is not yet public, quote unquote, public document. So we don't want to make it public document until we are sure that what we are saying is what we want. That's the main reason. And uh, Scott was able to point that out, and so did Mike Ravigini. We don't want to create a situation where there is a public records with request, and we are forced to release something that is not fully vetted. And then people would have it misconstrued. You know, that's why we didn't want to send it out to the subcommittee. Well, well, yeah, I understand that from from the consultant's perspective is that, that their document is not public. But I would assume oh no 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 not from the consultant from the cities. If if we send it to a, a member of the commission or even the the ad hoc committee of the commission. That releases the city from saying that this is a working draft that is only being processed internally. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, legally, once we give it to you, then we can give it to anyone as a request. But right now, if anyone from the general public or college park says, I want to see the working draft, and what we will say is, nope, uh, it's still being reviewed by staff, and all we're doing is a working draft. So we are okay. not legally bound to provide it to them. It seems odd that we would have a subcommittee dealing with it then because we aren't allowed to provide any input on it, but that's fine. I understand. Yeah. Um, so moving on to the current ad hoc HRMC subcommittees, we've got them listed on the agenda. Um, I don't know if we discuss that in any detail, but I do know if there is an error. And perhaps at our next meeting with our new commissioners, we can add some votes because I see a lot of names a lot of times since there's not so many of us. So, um, Number nine, brief announcements from staff commissioners liaisons. I don't see our liaison here. I will send him an update of our meeting. Um, my one brief announcement is that I had Ike set out the work plan, the goals from the previous session that we had. I think it was 20 to 21 goals, and I'd like to revisit that next meeting in April to cross off any things we've achieved, add anything on that we're hoping to achieve. We typically have a joint city council meeting in May, so it would be great to have a discussion period, maybe 20 minutes or so with the commissioners about what those goals would look like before we go to our city council meeting, hopefully in May. Anyone else? Announcements? Thoughts? Again, I wanted to can you, oh yeah, I wanted to make sure that you all know we would probably have a full commission in April because of the two new commissioners. We should have a full commission. I reviewed briefly their backgrounds. I don't know that um, I, one is involved in archaeology and the, the other person is in, involved in anything historical resources. So I don't know if they are, I mean, not archaeology, uh, architect. So I don't know if they would be of instant help to the commission or not. When um, I send them uh, introductory and welcome information, which I need to do, I intend to include OHP website where new commissioners can learn about the role of preservation and preservation 101 and the role of uh, uh, preservation commissions. So I will send that link to them if anyone else is interested in getting that. Uh, just flag me with an email, then I can copy that to you. Uh, I'm hoping that that would give them a good refresher if they haven't done anything on their own as a background to know what historic preservation is all about. Yeah, sure. Oh. I, I think that's always useful for folks to look at and click through. And so if you feel like, you know, including, you know, more than just the new commission, that'd be great. Yeah. No, well, I can I send it to everyone. Okay, I, I will be able to send it to everyone if that's the desire. You know, I know uh, that there are some things, you know, that is helpful from that uh, OHP web, web link. You know, actually, they have some certification things there, like 101, where you learn a little bit about planning. I mean, I'm sorry, it's <laughs> not planning, historic preservation, uh, and you can get certification from them. Okay, that's 
Oh, great, thank you. It's nice to provide some education to our new commissioners. I look forward to meeting them. I, I think they may have some background in at least the built environment. Uh, from a quick Google search, I'm not gonna reveal my Google search results, but they do look like they have some knowledge of buildings and planning processes. So I am I'm happy about that. Yes. Anyone else? I met with um, Laura Ambrose, is the, the Woodstock owner that's acquired the 238G Street property. Um, they, I, we talked over what they have planned for that building. She was very interested in pursuing designation for that as a historic resource. They, they intend to turn that property, you know, they want to see it become sort of a, a property that's closely associated with downtown Davis, and they would like to see it. Uh, if it's if it's appropriate, be designated as a resource. So I, I'll be looking to develop a DPR form on that, a historical research analysis of it. Um, I, I haven't done that yet, but, but my expectation based upon that property is it'll likely be, uh, you know, a property that would be likely considered as a merit resource. So I, I hope to be presenting that at the next meeting or the meeting after. Um, I, we've, we've, I think we're, we're clear now to send the, uh, the, the Claire Lane property to the city council to be designated as a merit resource to get that on their agenda? Yes, based on our email today, uh, I would still recommend uh, having the applicants reach out to the uh, district council member. Okay, uh, so uh, do, we, do, we, do we want to then postpone sending it to the city council until we've had a chance to reach it? It's in Gloria Partida's district. Do, well, do we, we want to have a chance to reach out to her first. Yes, because uh, one of the things you need to know is, you know, we just don't send it to them. Even through the minutes, they can read that, but we have to formally request for designation, which is a formal hearing. Uh, and typically on things like that, the city manager decides when to include that on the council agenda. Uh, okay. I, could we plan for it for the May city council meeting that we are possibly doing? That would be a great thing to do, and actually, uh, if if the owners can reach out to Gloria and Gloria reaches out to the city management, and then this is scheduled, they themselves too might even come up with the same conclusion to have it a win-win where the commission comes before council on, on a joint meeting, and then at the end of that, they will take action to designate a resource so that everybody celebrates. It's, it's not un, unusual for them to want to do something like that. Right, because usually they, they proclaim May as Historic Preservation Month, and it'd be nice to have a historic preservation activity. Yeah, and also possible, yeah, and possible action of a joint meeting. I think they, they, they still want to continue having joint commission council meetings, you know, so mm -hmm. ours probably might fall in that month. Okay, yeah, I mean, you probably need to get it working now to get some plans, but I think yeah. that would be... Commissioner Hickson, thank you for all the DPR work. You are I love DPR forms. It, is there, it, 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 in, in talking to the, to Gloria, to Partida, the council member, is there a problem with the email coming through the commission or with commissioners being present for that? I mean, I, I would think if the homeowners are going to do it, that I would attend as well. I don't think so. I, I think okay. the, uh, having them, the only reason I'm suggesting this is having the owners and then actually with a commissioner going to, Moving forward, uh, reaching out to because also she's your you know, she's your council member as well as mine, uh, you know. So, so you know, having a uniform effort between you and the owners reaching out to her might have a little more force versus you going. Uh, I don't know if you read that email I gave you to the level of questions someone is asking, uh, and that is based on a potential project that may or may not come before the commission. And somebody is saying, what historic resources, what architectural gem is there in Davis? So, you know, there are some people who feel like sometimes the commission is in the way of progress. And they ask those type of silly questions that you saw that was posed to me in the name of article. Uh, you know, so things like that happen. But when they realize that there are still some homeowners in the city who has interest in historic preservation, to the extent actually of volunteering to have their own property designated, that is something that is endearing that, you know, will touch any council member to say, hey, I want to take on my constituent, constituents' wish here and take it to the rest of the commissioners, I mean, of the council members. So that would be an incentive to do something. 
But if you go, they're going to see it as, you know, oh, this commission is always wanting to do something, you know, what gives, you know. So you might get a little run around. And I'm not saying that that's the case, but I said that could possibly happen. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my only reason for wanting to, it to come through us is just that it, it puts less pressure on the homeowners to feel like they're, they don't have to email the mayor themselves and invite her out there, that it can, it can be coming through the city commission. And, and I'll, I'll reach out to the homeowners and see what they want to do, but I, I'm sure they're fine either way. Well, they did indicate, you know, that the earlier the better. That they did say it at the last meeting. I mean, they seemed very proactively minded, you know, to want to have it designated at least as, as early as possible. Um, it just that you know, occurred to both of us to mention, hey, reach out to your council member. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I, I, will, I will make that recommendation to them. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, and by the way, uh, on 238G, uh, I spoke to Laura's uh, significant order. He came in. They want to add signs on the awning that is there now. Uh, and mm -hmm. I said it's fine. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I think there there there's some issues with the design. I mean, I, I think eventually we'll probably look at the design that they're proposing for it. I, I I think everything's basically good. That there, there there's room for some comments. Yeah, they claim that most of the stuff they want to do is based on the historic pictures they found. You know that they're gonna. They, I think they shared it with both of us. I haven't had a chance to look at it closely. And on the the Newman Center, we are preparing a letter to go to uh, the consultant there, and we should have that for you the next day or two. Uh, okay. The next days. Yeah, uh, I'm sh uh, yeah, I think that stuff I emailed you of the potential article might have to do with the Newman Center. So uh, the earlier, the better, so we can just get the information out to them. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and for the rest of the commission, it's not really like we should have and I are having private discussion here. Uh, I received an inquiry from uh, a freelance uh, writer requesting to have me interviewed as to what my role as a, a historical resources manager is and what I consider is uh, the achievement that I have contributed in historic preservation in Davis. <laughs> and I think the third one was um, what... Um, architecturally significant historic resources there are in Davis. So I, it's I all about me. Anyway. Yeah, go I, ahead. I, I read that in a very positive way. I thought he was looking to write a positive article about historic preservation. You, you seem to be taking it as, as No, it, it, it's not. It, it's not. Uh, it, the, the staff has no bearing on what historical resources we have in town. I can't, as an individual, create any of those things. If, if this individual wanted to write an article as they claim that is uh, statewide, they are trying to get at least Northern California or statewide in information on historic resources, then the question would be, you know, uh, what does the commission, what does the city do, not what do I do? What do I do has is totally irrelevant to what, uh, you know, have I don't, staff, as a staff liaison, I don't do anything. <laughs> I don't have any power to control anything. The commission even doesn't have much power besides the city council. But you want to ask, you know, what are you guys doing? And what are the interests in historic preservation? What are the projects that involve historic preservation? Uh, and what are incentives does the city provide to historic preservation if you are? Do you have any historically significant uh, architectural uh, buildings in Davis uh, that you are proud of? But when you focus it on my job description, um, my job achievement, that isn't to me is is myopic view you know present you know couching it in such a way to make it look like it's about davis when all is about what i do i mean i'm not seeking for a job interview and i'm not seeking for recognition uh, and i there isn't anything that i've done individually or collectively with the commission that would rise to the occasion of me being flagged <laughs> in any new local <laughs> article so i didn't see it as a flattering um inquiry uh, whatsoever. Uh, Deb, I'm telling you, I've been around this several times. When people get upset, they are always asking, what? Even some council members have asked me when they didn't like, uh, during the era of Kinton, they, one of them stopped me, a then mayor stopped me and said, why do we have historic preservation? What do you do anyway? Why do the city pay you to act as a liaison to the commission? So if I were to say, you know, oh, we have the historic resources manager, what does that really mean? 
it, it's not because he was interested. So I'm just asking because I don't know. But at the end, you know, he didn't know that I was in the toilet when he was telling somebody that if it's left to him, he, he would shut down his historic preservation commission. <laughs> but when he came out and saw me, he tried to see it to look like he's genuinely interested in learning these things. So that's how I see that article. And I've had so many similar type of inquiries in the time past that I know what it is when I see it. It's, it if, if someone definitely cares about historic preservation, uh, wants to write about it, there are so many ways to write about it without having to seek the role of a staff person. You know, there are so many ways okay. to talk about it. Uh, well, good luck, guys. Um, <laughs> whatever your questions may be. Um, I have do I really need a motion to adjourn? That's moved. Okay, second anyone? I'll second. I was okay. okay we, I'll give one this time. <laughs> okay. Aye. Uh, everyone raise hands. Aye. See, one, two, three. Aye. 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 Okay, all eyes. Okay, so adjourned to be 23. Thank you all. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you. Have a great night. Yeah. All right, good night, um, all. Good night.